There's no doubt, of course, that we can automate many and many of the tasks that underlie the marketing and advertising business today, and that could be very valuable. But there's always going to be room for the human perspective. I'm going to talk to you today. My topic is machine learning and data. And I'm not really going to get into the weeds of what machine learning is beyond just saying this. It's a means by which computers can effectively solve problems or derive insights without being explicitly programmed or having rules to do so. That's all I'm going to say about it. Instead, I'm going to turn to talking about the myths and realities of how data and machine learning apply to business from specifically my vantage point within the advertising industry, which is on the technology side. So a little bit about me. Um, you heard a little bit previously, but uh, I started off my professional career as an academic, received my PhD in mathematics, specifically studying geometry and general relativity and black holes. That's the short shield black hole, which I was very familiar with in the olden days. Um, I did a couple of postdocs, first at Stanford and the second one here at Columbia, just a couple buildings over, and partway through it realized that I was miserable. And I, as much as I love the math and I love the teaching, I felt like I was disconnected from the world and not really able to use my whole self. As I said, I'm not really going to get into the weeds of what machine learning is. Rather, I'm going to present to you a sort of a series of metaphors uh, about the content. But before I do that, let me first ask you all a question. How many of you have seen, saw the movie Black Panther? Raise your hand. Oh, awesome. And those who hadn't seen it, you're at least familiar with it, raise a hand. Okay. So I want to start by talking about vibranium. Now, you may recall that vibranium is this uh, fictional metal that uh, sits in a deposit in solely within the borders of the hidden nation of Wakanda that Black Panther comes from. And it has these uncanny thermodynamic and kinetic energy properties that he uses in his suit and in his boots to give rise to all kinds of um, superhuman actions that he's able to take. And it causes the local flora and fauna to mutate, giving rise to an herb that when ingested gives one speed and endurance and agility and extrasensory perception and healing powers and the ability to see in the dark and to hear heartbeats and on and on and on. So I don't in any way mean to diminish the really cool and intricate lore underlying the storytelling of how exactly vibranium gives rise to the power of the Wakandan people. But you gotta, at the end of the day, you gotta admit, it's a comic book universe, and vibranium is sort of this all-purpose source of power, right? Which is kind of akin to how we hear machine learning and AI being used in the industry. It's this all-purpose source of power that's gonna solve all your problems. Now, we know that the reality is a bit different than that, and I'm gonna, my goal for today is to try to separate the fact from the fiction around machine learning and AI in the marketing industry. So if you take one thing away from my talk today, let it be this. Machine learning is not vibranium. Okay. Well, the specifics here that I wanna dive into are focused on three specific areas. Um, this, as data and machine learning apply to strategy of your business, the organization of your business, and people. So let's start. Myth number one, creating a data and machine learning strategy is a one and done. You gather together some experts, you do your research, you sit in a room, you create your strategy, and there you have it, your data and machine learning strategy once and for all. Well, the reality is much different. Data and machine learning is not a one and done. It's a new ingredient for strategy in every part of the business. The metaphor I want to give you for this is think of it like our favorite 13th element, aluminum. Now, aluminum has thousands of uses today in automotive industry and aircraft and household and building, you name it, aluminum shows up. It's an amazing ingredient. By the way, my metaphor extends a little bit here because when it was first discovered, aluminum was actually thought to be very rare. And the French crown jewels actually feature bars of aluminum because it was thought to be this newly discovered rarity. 
But not long after, they discovered that actually it's one of the most common metals on the face of the planet, and it's now everywhere. So maybe someday machine learning will be like that too, not this rarity that we all uh, hold up, but everywhere. But the point here is, aluminum is not something that you sit down and think to yourself, what is my aluminum strategy? No, you have your business strategy, and you look to see how aluminum can help solve the problems of each part of your business, whether that's to make a better product or make it more efficient or safer or cheaper. So I submit to you, then, that machine learning and data science and data are like the aluminum for marketing and other businesses as well. Let me turn to the marketing or marketplace uh, advertising marketplace, rather, and talk about how it fits in there. Now, I say marketplace, but the advertising marketplace isn't just one marketplace. There's a whole spectrum of these, ranging from television upfronts, linear television on the one end, to hand-sold digital advertising in the middle, all the way out to the RTB, or real-time bidding marketplace, on the far end. For those who may not be familiar, real-time bidding is um, that means by which uh, Advertising is bought and sold via instantaneous programmatic auction. Every time a browser loads or an app comes up, a call is sent, an auction is held, and the winning bid, the winning advertiser, gets the privilege of serving a creative in real time, in milliseconds. And that's the business that AppNexus was in. So much of the work, in my experience, has been deploying machine learning into that real-time bidding marketplace. Let me give you a few examples. First of all, using our proprietary technology for our real-time bidding marketplace, we deploy machine learning algorithms to help determine that bid price that has to be calculated in milliseconds on behalf of an advertiser to decide on the basis of what website it's coming from, what user it is, what time of day, what the advertiser's goals are, how much to bid, which then in turn determines whether or not they're likely to win. Great use of machine learning. On the sell side, on this of our marketplace, supporting publishers with their monetization of their content, we have machine learning algorithms that help to set reserve prices or floors per auction to help protect their bottom line, their monetization, or to help determine whether to allocate a given impression to a guaranteed um, deal that they've already sold versus something coming from the spot market, the RTB market, helping publishers monetize. We have algorithms that support the marketplace in itself to create more efficient, more liquid marketplaces. So just as an example here, um, providing the means by which buyers, whether they're using our proprietary technology or not, can buy not just impressions, but actually video completes or views. We arbitrage on the back end so that they only pay if they get the outcome that they're looking for. And finally, my team focused a lot on marketplace safety. So, that little four is intentionally placed between the supply and the consumers because we're doing both. We're cleaning the, the traffic that comes into the platform, ensuring that it's human and not bot traffic, and also making sure that the supply meets the criteria for our marketplace, for instance, not piracy or hate speech or pornography. So these are all different ways that we've deployed machine learning in the RTB marketplace, but when... Um, AT&T acquired AppNexus, I think of it as me acquiring a new arm to the data science team, and that team is looking at interesting ways of using the AT&T data to enrich this marketplace, the, the future Xander marketplace, even further. So how are they doing that? Well, they're taking the proprietary AT&T identity data in an, in an anonymized, privacy-safe way and looking to see how we can push that into the marketplace to allow advertisers to connect users across screens, their different viewing experiences. We're using our proprietary media assets and understanding how consumers engage with media, how that ties to the metadata around the content, how they then engage with brands whom they see through that content, and get deriving insights from that, feeding back into the marketplace. And finally, perhaps most apropos for this audience, looking to see how we can understand that consumer data to provide insight about the audiences that marketers are hoping to reach and where they are in their customer journey, and eventually tying that all back to attribution around their brands. So, 
I hope you see now that there's not one overarching data and machine learning strategy for Xander. There are many places in which it ties in, all in service of the broader vision of the converged uh, Xander marketplace. And while you all may not be running marketplace companies, I submit that you probably have many different parts of your strategies as well, and should think of machine learning and data as a raw ingredient to be used in those areas as well. So next myth. Machine learning is best left to the experts in a data science organization. Now, at the face of it, this has to be true. You probably want to have your machine learning experts actually designing and deploying your machine learning algorithms. Fair enough. But the reality is slightly more complicated than that. Machine learning and data science must directly interface and engage with the business in order to derive to drive results. You do not want them sitting off in a little silo to the side. So in order to explain this further, I'll give you another metaphor for machine learning, this time electricity. This metaphor was made famous by Andrew Ng a few years ago, who said that he believed that machine learning and artificial intelligence would be to the 21st century what electricity was to the 20th meaning that it would one by one transform every industry. I actually think that's true. And I think that the metaphor is powerful because when you think about what it means to have electricity transform an industry, that gives you some sense of what it means to have data and machine learning transform an industry. So for instance, suppose you're running some sort of a manufacturing operation and you want to electrify your factory. You don't hire a bunch of electricity experts and put them over in some corner. No, they're going to come look at all the different parts of your business, from your tooling to your platform to your infrastructure, and address those one by one according to the business need. And by the way, once you've, man once you've electrified your, your factory, you're going to have to make sure that you keep an eye on your supply chain, making sure that you have a full supply of electricity coming in at all times and it's reliable. So similarly, as we bring machine learning and data into our organizations, we have to think one by one about what that means in terms of platform and tooling and priorities, and by the way, making sure that we look after our data supply chain. Let me give you some sense of what that's looked like at AppNexus. This slide was, um, is adapted from a, a talk I gave at the very end of 2014 when we were just on the cusp of the modern age, which is why it, it ends at 2015, just when I'd been made chief data scientist. And I was talking about the sea change that I'd already seen then in 2015, just at AppNexus. Now, Dark Ages is back before I started when the company was founded, but in the years prior to when I started in 2012, um, the company was producing a large amount of data so I would say it was plentiful, but it was essentially a byproduct. It was all reporting data on behalf of the fundamental service being offered by the platform. Nobody was really using that data very effectively, or when they were, they had to use incredibly sophisticated mathematics on top of the data because it was so rigid that in order to drive any insights, you had to be very, very subtle. Now, as the data science team was created, we, we then found a new home in engineering and started being able to customize some of the data. We started being able to pick some of the variables we wanted to work with and create our new aggregations and get better tooling and start actually using some machine learning techniques. So this was the beginning of the electrification, if you will. And then around the time that uh, I was made chief data scientist, we turned data science into its own organization and built out, started building out in 2015, and then it took, uh, took place over the course of a few years, a true platform by which the team could go and access all the raw data that they wanted to extract insights and drive machine learning algorithms to create the value for the marketplace that you saw in a previous slide. Now, you may say, well, you just started this section by saying that you didn't want to have your machine learning experts sitting off in some organization, that they needed to be integrated into the business, but here I am saying that data science became its own organization, and that's when we started achieving some success. But the point here is that from the time that we came, became our own organization, we started having to make an explicit intentional decision to integrate with the business. Rather than already being integrated into a product or engineering team, we started having to operate in a trifecta manner. This slide is adapted from one that I presented in the, to the company right when we, we became an organization, a top-level organization. 
And uh, I was saying, where does data science fit in? Right here. We have to operate in lockstep with product and engineering organizations to make sure that we're solving the right problems and then appropriately executing them for the business. Now again, I'm speaking from an advertising technology perspective, and I know many in the room are not, but this generalizes, I think, pretty directly to probably your own businesses as well. When you have machine learning in the mix, you need to ensure that it is operating in lockstep with the people who know what the business needs are what part of the factory needs to be electrified, where you're going to derive that benefit, and in lockstep with whomever is going to be executing that vision, whether it's a services organization or a sales organization or whatever the insights are that you're going to plug back into your business, you need to make sure that they're operating always in lockstep. Not a siloed organization. Okay, and finally, myth number three. This one is very common. It's almost in the water, it feels like. Machines will replace human intervention in marketing. I think there's a lot of fear underlying this myth. But I think the reality is machines can do a lot, but they cannot do everything in marketing, which seems... Yeah, let me go on. Thinking about what metaphor to use for machine learning and data for this myth, I thought long and hard and realized that it's the simplest thing possible. At the end of the day, machine learning is machines. So the image on the slide here shows Go. You may be aware that DeepMind um, recently beat the world's best Go player at Go, which was thought to be sort of an insurmountable hurdle in artificial intelligence some time ago. And I have to confess that I was a little bit sad when that happened. But at the end of the day, even as smart as that particular machine was, it was a machine. It was solving a problem that was confined to a specific task with specific parameters and a specific end goal. And that is what machine learning does today. So there's no doubt, of course, that we can automate many and many of the tasks that underlie the marketing and advertising business today, and that could be very valuable but there's always going to be room for the human perspective. Humans to understand what patterns are emerging from the data, look at all of that, understand the humans behind that data, behind those patterns, and bring that to novel storytelling, formats, originality, creativity. Because that's how our culture evolves, is through this creative uh, evolution that's not confined to specific task after specific task. At the end of the day, humans have something that machines will never have, at least not in any kind of future I foresee other than a science fiction one, and that is empathy. And that makes all the difference. Thank you.